Welcome back to the RAS ACS and Behind the Knife Journal Club on Landmark Papers and Surgery. I'm Madhuri Nagaj, a General Surgery Resident from UT Southwestern, and I will be reviewing the Western Trauma Association Multicenter Trial on the Management of Patients with Anterior Abdominal Stab Wounds, published in 2009. Prior to 1960, all anterior abdominal stab wounds underwent operative exploration with a laparotomy. In 1960, however, Dr. Shafton proposed an idea he called selective conservatism. This was essentially a conservative management strategy using clinical evaluation based on the knowledge that of all anterior abdominal stab wounds, only some cause peritoneal violation, and then even fewer actually cause an injury which requires operative intervention. While there are clear indications for laparotomies, to this day, the management of anterior abdominal stab wounds in stable patients without these signs remains controversial. The debate focuses on the balance of timely intervention, avoiding unnecessary morbidity, and resource utilization. The Western Trauma Association, with 11 institutions, ran a two-year prospective multicenter trial to study the management of asymptomatic patients with anterior abdominal stab wounds. Patients included had to be 16 years or older and have an anterior abdominal stab wound located between the costal margins, groin creases, and anterior axillary line as depicted in brown. This included patients with multiple wounds. Investigators agreed on standard indications for immediate laparotomy, such as evisceration or hemodynamic instability. All other patients were then managed by the surgeon's discretion using the modalities of CT, fast, local wound exploration, diagnostic peritoneal lavage, and serial clinical assessments with standard procedures and diagnostic criteria listed. Data such as demographics, injury details, length of stay, and complications were collected in prospective fashion. Of the total 359 patients, 89% were male, 95% had injuries by knives, and 34% had multiple stab wounds. Sensitivity and specificity were calculated for each patient assessment modality based off of the resulting therapeutic and non-therapeutic laparotomies. The most sensitive modalities were local wound explorations and serial clinical assessments. When combined with the other modalities listed above, these modalities had no missed injuries or delayed laparotomies. The most specific modalities were fast and serial clinical assessments. Of note, FAST was performed in 48% of the patients, but the primary management decision in only 4% of them. Indeed, there is no consensus on the use of FAST in penetrating injury, and that is reflected in this study. Regarding serial clinical assessments, of the 26 patients managed, only one had a non-therapeutic laparotomy. Three were taken to the OR for the development of peritonitis at five, six, and eight hours after presentation. These patients had no complications and the length of stay averaged seven days as compared to 5.5 for all who underwent immediate therapeutic laparotomy. A total of 174 patients required laparotomy, of which 26% were non-therapeutic. Length of stay for non-therapeutic laparotomies was still 3.6 days and a morbidity rate of 4.4% was seen with one pneumonia, one wound infection, and one hematoma. In the discussion, the authors call attention to the overall laparotomy rate of 36% and reinforce that 26% of those were non-therapeutic. With these results, the authors proposed a management pathway to minimize resource burden and delayed management in unnecessary laparotomies. They recommend that when a patient arrives with an anterior abdominal stab wound, any with immediate laparotomy indications such as shock, peritonitis, or evisceration proceed accordingly. The stable patients then undergo local wound exploration. A technically adequate local wound exploration must be performed, and positive results are indicated by penetration of the peritoneum specifically, as opposed to the anterior or posterior fascial sheath. Those that are negative can then be safely discharged from the ED. Those that are positive or equivocal, rather than undergo immediate laparotomy, if stable, would be admitted for serial clinical exams. After 24 hours, if patients remained stable without peritonitis and did not have a abnormal laboratory values, 
they could undergo a PO challenge and then be discharged home. Indeed, in 2011, the Western Trauma Association published a prospective multicenter trial to evaluate the safety and efficacy of their proposed algorithm. They found that in 222 total patients, of the 81 stable and asymptomatic patients that followed the protocol, only 2% had non-therapeutic laparotomies and no morbidity with delayed care. They recognized the moderate rate of deviations and therefore propose a larger trial to further corroborate these positive findings. Thus, the take-home messages include, serial clinical exams are safe and reliable when performed by or corroborated by someone with experience, Modalities such as CT, DPL, and laparoscopy may not be necessary, sensitive, specific, or cost-effective. And those who require laparotomy generally manifest early, and there appears to be no morbidity with the delay to OR. This was Madhuri Nagraj again. Thank you for listening, and feel free to email me with any questions or comments. Don't forget to review the score modules on abdominal trauma. Thank you.